Hi everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the series, Behind the Victory. In this series, I'll interview exceptional players and find out what tactics they employ to ensure their win. In this video, I've interviewed the champion of the recent global release tournament hosted by Almond. If you would like to participate in such events in the future, do remember to join his Discord server using the link in the description. In the tournament, a majority of players use Kagero, which is widely considered to be the best clan to run this season, since we all know of Draconic Overlords and Blockades, Intercept Killers, as well as the clan having many cards that can retire the opponent's rear guards. However, to everyone's surprise, the champion of the tournament was Vigma1296, who used a Royal Paladin deck. According to him, the main tactic was to rush the opponent, and apparently it all worked out for him in the end. His deck is on the expensive side, but I believe after playing all farming for 2-3 weeks, and if you only focus on Royal Paladin, this deck should be easily obtainable. His general tips on how to play Royal Paladin at the moment was to save the counter blast for Blaster Blade. That's why he doesn't use balls and Akane, which use up counter blasts in order to set up a formation for Akane and to hit 13k for Boris. The main weakness he felt that Royal Paladin had was that the gate trees were all 10k bases, and hence the opposition can easily take advantage of that fact. An example would be that it is easier to create 20k columns than 21k columns, and if it is Vanguard against Vanguard, he needs a booster in order to hit Dragonic Overlord or Ashura Kaiser. However, for strength, he feels that Royal Paladins can build fields easily, buckle for boosters, and Gensalots being basically interceptors since they can trade for Blaster Blades, and also the fact that Gensalot is basically a heal that can be recycled if he draws into it. His number one fear and enemy is one that I believe many of us share, that will be Blockade since, to him, it was a race against time to see who could deal the most amount of damage, and he felt that he couldn't win the battles most of the time. I completely agree with this, because whenever I go up against Blockade, my main strength, which is to call out Interceptors, is practically useless. His main winning image was to have Blaster Blade retire a rear guard, hopefully an Interceptor, and then have Palamedes and another rearguard in one column to hit the magic numbers. Remember to save your Marins, especially if you're going against Dragonic Overlord or Ashura Kaiser. How does he use his cards in his deck, you may ask? Well, for Buckle, he said that he used it to mainly generate boosters, never to superior ride. According to him, it helped against Kagero the most. As for Gensalot, Against Kaigiro and Nova Grapplers, he sent Gantelot back into the deck most of the time. This was to increase his chances of drawing a defensive trigger, which we all know is essential in stopping a blockade or a push from restanding rearguard. However, he did not send Gantelot back if he hasn't tracked many triggers after being on Great Tree for 4 turns, as it meant that he will probably see triggers in damage checks and drive checks. On the event that he wrote Gantelot, he tried to not use Gantelot's skill, but when he did, it was to either deal damage early game, or when he knew that the opponent couldn't perfect guard it. He said that Blaster Blade played a pivotal role in his win, as he used him to remove intercepts and rear guards that would cause him trouble. For example, 13k attackers that would easily hit magic numbers. He liked to force the opponent to play great ones by exhausting the opponent's grade 2 or grade 3 resources, since they will be easier to remove and pose a low threat during the opponent's turn. If he had Blaster Blade in hand, he would try to ride him, since he plays Alfred Earlies and Gantelot which require Blaster Blade to win the soul, but he never used the retire ability on his grade 2 turn. 11k bases were annoying to him, and he found the best way to deal with them was columns of Palamedes 
being boosted by Marin or Toy Pogo. So how do you deal with each clan exactly? For Kagiro and Oroko Ting Tank, the plan was to always try to play Great Tooth if you went first to prevent early damage. This is so that there was more leeway once the opponent rides blockade, or to prevent Oracle Think Tank players from hitting early and gaining a card advantage. He ensured that his rear guards hit perfect numbers. And he never rode a great 2 with 8000 power, as according to him, he was easily punished. He told me that during the tournament, in a single turn, he dealt 3 damage to an opponent who had Wyvern Strike Tages as a vanguard. That is scary. As for Nova Grapplers, he focused on retiring rear guards, but if the opponent hit too many draw triggers, he would tend to focus on dealing damage instead. The reasoning for that is that the only way that Nova Grapplers can generate an advantage is through draw triggers and restanding. So, if he takes them out, the opponent may not be able to hit the vanguard and thus re-stand, as we know that Golden Rutao and Lion Heat needs to hit the vanguard. Finally, it comes down to mirror matches. It was simply who can get rid of intercepts, do more damage first, and get Gensalot heals. He said they were usually quick, but could become way too long if both players drew too many heals or lack the counter blast to activate abilities. That's all for today everyone. Vikma said that he's excited for Wave 2 and the release of Galahad, since he's an 11 k Vanguard as well as Majesty Lord Blaster, which if I recall correctly will be a tier 1 build in the foreseeable future. I hope all of you enjoyed this video and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe too for more videos on Vanguard Zero. Thanks for watching.